cataractcoach.com. The challenge of iris colobomas, absence of iris tissue, and often capsular support as well. So looking at this case here, there's the cataract. Now, removing the cataract actually is not the most difficult part of the case. So let's just cut to the end here. Good-looking capsular excess. Here comes a capsular tension ring. Now, I like this technique where the left hand has a Sinsky hook to help guide the leading eyelet of the CTR, while the other hand can slowly feed in the CTR. Now, in an iris coloboma like this, there's typically an equal absent area of capsular or zymer support there. And so, usually it's only about a clock hour or two, so 30 degrees, maybe 45, rarely 60 degrees. So a CTR, capsular tension ring, is really a great idea here because it'll bolster that weak area without you having to do any other more challenging procedures. So in other words, I don't think you need to suture in a capsular tension segment or other types of scleral fixated support. So there's the CTR on the capsular bag, and that looks pretty darn good. You can see with the red reflex, absence of zonules in that one quadrant of the iris coloboma. Now here comes the lens, three-piece lens going on the eye, good rotation of the tip. Remember the 7L rule, leading haptic, better look like a number seven. That's the correct orientation. And then the 7L rule means the trailing haptic should look like the capital letter L. So there it goes, being injected nice and easy. There's your three-piece lens. There's the 7L configuration, so the lens is an anti-S. Not an S, as we say, S is stupid, and I don't want to make a stupid mistake. And so let's get this lens dialed in nice and easy. Now, technically, with this eye well in the capsule bag, it doesn't really matter where you place the haptics because you have the CTR already in the bag. But in this case, the surgeon is going to place the haptics towards the area of zonal weakness. Now, if you had a small area of zonal weakness and you did not even have a CTR available, you could just put that IOL in and that orientation with the haptic acting as a bolster. Now, I brought a myotic agent in to bring the pupil down, and that's what we got. And now, going to suture the iris to a pupiloplasty. So, nice technique here. To get the other end, I actually like to use a hollow bore needle to help guide it out. But either technique you want is fine. And so notice how it's a, these are good bites, not too close to the pupil margin because you don't want them to cheese wire through. This is a 10O polypropylene suture, most likely. And now we'll get the ends out and do that fourth throw pupiloplasty. So one, two, three, four throws. A little bit hard to see on a video with 10O um, polypropylene. And once you do that, you'll see it'll bring the pupil down. Now the catch here is, what are you going to do to center up the pupil? So once you close this iris defect, remember there's an absence of tissue here. So pull the two suture ends. There you go. Look at that. Coming together very nicely. But this is also going to close the defect, but it'll also drag the pupil inferior downwards towards the coloboma. So here's some micro scissors to cut the suture. Probably place another one or two sutures here. So what would you do to recenter the pupil? Now, some surgeons will do sphincterotomy. So on the opposite end of the coloboma, add that pupil margin, make a few snips in the iris. And that certainly works too. But our surgeon here has an interesting technique of using a little bit of endocautery. And we'll show you that. And you can use that to shape the pupil, shape the um, position of it. So again, pulling through here, there's that 10 polypropylene. This procedure of just suturing this up does take a lot longer than you're anticipating. So don't do a quick hurried surgery and think, okay, I'll get this done in about 10 minutes. There's just no chance. So pulling that suture through. Hey, by the way, let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. We have so much great material. You'd love to learn from it. Everything's archived there. It's really a much easier way to search for a video than YouTube. We have our free curriculum series, our book, our podcast every week. All right, let's get back to our video here. So taking a look here, getting that sutured up. Beautiful. There you go. Looks like one, two, three sutures. And now here comes the magic. Here's the endocautery, and look what you can do. Just doing a little tiny bit of cautery there in the iris stroma, you can shrink the iris and therefore pull the pupil back into a better position here. So using the tip of the endocautery in the iris, there it is. No, nope, a little bit more. Get it in there, and look what happens. You can actually move the iris, uh, uh, contract it, and therefore shift that pupil and get it a lot better centered. So very nicely done here. Going all around little bits of endocautery. And again, you can also do higher energy and you can even have more contraction, but the key here is to be pretty gentle. And at the end, you're gonna have a really nice result. So this patient obviously has a beautiful result, gonna be very happy, fix the cataract, likely fix the majority of that refractive air, fix the coloboma, and center up the pupil. 
Beautiful case here. I want to thank the server for sending the video in. You can also send your videos in. We get 30 to 50 videos a week, and I look through all of them. You got to look at cataractcoach.com. There's a link there on the website that tells you how to submit your video. Please follow the directions carefully. Here you go. Post cautery, and looks really nice. And then let's see a post-stop one. See, before cautery, you can see much more decentered. After cautery, it looks fantastic. Here's one week post-stop. Beautiful result. And again, thank you for watching. And check out that podcast every single week, a brand new podcast. So much to learn everywhere where you find your podcasts.